If our church treasurer was to give you £50 tomorrow, okay, she's going to give you £50 tomorrow, and then we're going to ask you to go and use it to make more money for the church. Now, we've already done something like that in the church. We gave every member £10, oh, quite a number of years ago now, and you had to use your £10 to then go, you could buy ingredients, you could make things, buy materials, whatever, and uh, make more money and bring the money back to the church with a profit. And if there was a loss, well, there was a loss. That was just one of these things. But if we were to give you £50, I don't think we would, but if we were to give you £50, what would you go and do to raise funds for the church? Would you be adventurous? and try something completely different and spend all the money? Would you be a little bit more cautious and think, well, it's not my money, so I need to be a bit more careful? Or would you just be very safe and not do very much with it at all because you were frightened of losing the money? So that is setting the scene for our Bible reading today, which is going to be read to us by Neil. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14 to 30. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey, who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I had harvest where I have not sown and gathered where I have not scattered seed. Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has ten bags. For whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servant outside, into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen. So today, we're not actually going to be talking about the money or the bags of gold or the talents, which was the Greek coin within these uh, bags. So we're not talking about that today. We're not talking about the absent landowner, landowner either. So what are we going to be talking about today? Well, I wanted to lend this passage towards who influences us. And who are our inspirational figures? Because this passage to me does talk about that. 
you know, inspirational people that can go out and do something in their lives. So I'm going to show you a few clips of some of our members who are telling us about the people who have inspired them in their lives. In the past, I was inspired and influenced by two brothers who uh, left the far north and joined the Royal Navy going around the world. And whenever they came home, they just um, had changed so much. So that inspired me basically to do the same. So I spent 12 years doing the same and I managed to circumnavigate the globe three times. What an experience, uh, what a learning experience, what a life experience. Um, so that, that was amazing. More recently and in the present, I've pretty much been inspired by uh, those in our own church family who've given so much of their time and efforts and talent over many, many years. Um, and they've inspired me and influenced me to offer my own time and talents to try and carry on in their footsteps. And uh, I hope that gives me as much pleasure as the 12 years in the Navy did. Someone who inspired me a long time ago uh, was my first employer who took me on um, after school and out weekends to work in this shop. He was a very nice man and I learned a lot from him and from the other uh, employees in the shop, of course. Um, but he taught me how to rotate stock, how to add up quickly in your head, because at that time there was no tills that added up the prices. You had to do it as you went along. Um, but all through that, this man, I found, wouldn't, asked me to do anything he was not go, go, not willing to do himself. And I find, found that to be an ethic, a work ethic, that I took on to use all my, all my working life. My father was probably the greatest influence in my life. As a child, along with my sisters, my dad took us hill walking, canoeing, camping, swimming, to name but a few pursuits, and we visited lots of castles and places of historical interest. These activities gave me a lifelong love of the Scottish hills and a great interest in history. More importantly, he gave me life values. He had a great belief in truth and justice, and I always strive for these in my own life. He was a man of faith, an elder in the church, and on his gravestone, as he had requested, is inscribed in the book of Mika to do justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly with thy God. This was how he tried to live his life and it was a great example to set his children. Currently some of the people who inspire me the most are people older than myself, in particular members of our own congregation who carry out so much good work in the community and remain active well into their 80s and beyond, showing me that age is no barrier to living a worthwhile life. I want to be like them. The person who has inspired me most of my life is my grander Monroe. Although he was born blind, he understood colour like nobody else I've ever known. To him, red was heat and blue was cold, and grass smelt like a freshly cut lawn. Plums were purple, tree bark was brown, snow was white, and black was the absence of sound in the dead of night whilst my favourite coloured yellow was the feel of the heat of the sun on your skin. He taught me not to prejudge people by what I saw, but instead by what I experienced and what the interaction was like. And I feel that this has helped me make friends throughout my lifetime. Needless to say, I did a little bit of research about who inspires people, but more today on who influences people. The top 10 inspirational figures from history. Well, I'll look that up first. So this is them. Isaac Newton, Martin Luther King Jr., Charles Darwin, William Shakespeare, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, the Dalai Lama, 
Winston Churchill, Albert Einstein, Nelson Mandela and Mother Teresa. They were the top 10. Mm, only one woman in there. Anyway, if you're not familiar with the app called Instagram, I use it, but not very often, but I know many of our members are on Instagram, but it's an app where you just put things up on there that maybe you've done or something you've seen, or there's lots of reasons what, as to what you'd put up on Instagram. But there's many people on Instagram who are classed as influencers, people who influence what others think, do, believe. Some of them are inspirational figures. So I'm going to tell you about a few. However, they do split it into categories. So the first one that came across was the fashion influencers in today's world. OK, so, for example, people like Robert Downey Jr., who is an actor. Well, he is an influencer in fashion and he has 46.2 million followers. So that's people who basically hang on to his every word and he influences them on how to spend their money on fashion, what clothes to wear and what goes with what and what's the best thing going at, the, at this time. There's another person called Chiara uh, Farang, Farang, Faragni and she has 19.5 million followers. And then really there's lots of more uh, with one, two, three million followers, but nothing in comparison to these numbers. Then you have top business influence, influencers who influence people how to uh, run businesses, how to invest money in businesses, and they have 12 to 30 million followers each. I mean, I just can't get my head around these numbers, all following one person. There's influencers and inspirational people in travel, entertainment, publishing, industry, beauty, photography, home and family. And some of these people have over 50 million followers each. I mean, wow, I, I really can't comprehend that. But one of the home influencers that I have heard of and read their book in our book club is someone called Mrs. Hinch. And she tells people of the products that she likes because they do a great job and uh, she's always cleaning her house and doing lots of different things. And she never, I don't believe she actually recommends you to go out and buy things. She just tells you about all the things that she likes. And one of the things that she really likes is Zaflora. Now, Zaflora has been around longer than I've been born. It is a well-known product. But since she started using it, and there's lots of different fragrances now than there ever used to be, their sales have gone through the roof. So she is definitely an influence in the, the home products. But in our story today, two of the men, well, they are influential people and probably inspirational to a lot of people because they go out with their bags of gold and they make their boss very happy because they bring back even more, double what they were given. Now, each one of us, well, we're all unique. And we keep saying that uh, often, you know, God has made and designed us all, but we're all unique individuals. And some of us in our uniqueness are definitely risk takers. Oh yeah, we'll risk things with our money. We'll risk things with our lives and, and what we do with extreme sports and things like that. So some of us are risk takers in our lives, while other people, can be extremely cautious with their money, with what they do in their lives. So then there's the whole load of folk that are in between one extreme and the other. Some of us are leaders, while others are followers. So we're all different in what, how we look at life. But the men were, in this story, asked to go out and bring back more money. Their boss, would be doing nothing for this other than giving them the money to go and do it. And for me, well, a bit of slavery comes to mind in this passage because, you know, they were given the money and told to go out and do it and they worked their socks off 
for somebody else. So, to me, yeah, I don't see any equality or justice in this story for what they were asked to do by this landowner. Because we are asked by God through Jesus to bring about equality and justice. And to do that, we need to speak up and we need to speak out about the injustices that we see in this world. And in that story, I definitely see a bit of injustice. So, have you ever had an experience of an over-demanding boss? And have you ever had an experience of someone who only sees you for what you can do for them, rather than for who you really are? I'm going to leave you to ponder this. And now let's hear Neil once again, who's going to lead us in a reflection entitled A Taste of Freedom, and then he'll lead us straight in to our prayer. A Taste of Freedom. Freedom, last chance to taste it. Liberation, last chance to chase it. Money handed over. No strings attached, a gift in trust, no chance of that. Where did you reap it? Who did the sowing? How did you take it? Who did the growing? Harsh demands, free now to reject them. Greed and hoarding, not bound to respect them. Landlord now absent, someday returning. How long this last chance for slavery spurning? Freedom, I'm digging a hole. Liberation, burying your gold. Wasn't I always worthless to you unless serving your ends as deals and profits do? Take it from me, what was not yours to give? I've entered my own joy in this last chance to live. And we pray now. Lord God, giver of all good things, giver of life itself, we worship and adore you. You created the earth and asked us to care for it. We took control and began to exploit the resources you gave us. You gave us enough and more to share. We hoarded as though things were scarce and let others go hungry and voiceless. God, if we have learned nothing else in this season, may we never forget how connected we all are across this world. When one part of the body hurts, all suffer. So God, before we lose sight of all that you've taught us, unclench our hands and release us your generosity. Convict us in our worship of your call to clothe the naked, to feed the hungry, to house the homeless, to give sight to the blind and healing to the lame. Such is your power and your faith in us. May your worship then renew and equip us to serve you by serving the world. Amen. Hymn 97 O God, you search me and you know me. Two verses. Mm -hmm. 